Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about sarcoidosis. Now, sarcoidosis is not something you see tremendously uh, frequently in uh, practice. However, sarcoid is a very, very, very big favorite of uh, the USMLE. The, they love to test this, uh, particularly the bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. Uh, this can definitely score you an easy point on the test. Sarcoidosis is a multisystemic disease. We don't know what causes it. When you see this on USMLE and when you see this in clinical practice, primarily you're going to see symptoms that are uh, affecting the lungs, symptoms that are, uh, that are constitutional, and symptoms that affect the skin. So lung, skin, constitutional. It can also affect the eyes, it can affect the peripheral nervous system, liver, kidneys, heart, and other tissue. So really, sarcoidosis can affect anything. But when you see sarcoidosis on the USMLE, primarily you're going to think of lung symptoms, you're going to think of skin symptoms, you're going to think of constitutional symptoms, and uh, ocular symptoms. Sarcoidosis histologically is non-caseating granulomas, and uh, women are affected more than men, blacks tend to be affected more than whites, and the age of onset is usually in early adulthood, 20s to 30s. The characteristic finding of sarcoidosis is bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy on x-ray. So on the USMLE, it's going to typically be a black female in her 20s to 30s. Of course, clinically, it can be in pretty much anybody, but the USMLE likes to use those sort of stereotypes. Typically, it presents with pulmonary complaints and constitutional symptoms. There may be skin symptoms, there may be ocular symptoms, there may even be other symptoms in real life, but the USMLE likes to keep it simple. Usually, it's pulmonary complaints and constitutional symptoms. The symptoms uh, constitutionally are malaise, fatigue, fever, arthralgia is pretty nonspecific. Uh, your pulmonary symptoms are dyspnea, shortness of breath, chest pain, which are all restrictive uh, symptoms, but again, very nonspecific. And you can have this uh, skin manifestation called lupus perneo which, like any lupus type of skin symptom, uh, affects the face. Lupus perneo, we'll see a picture of that, but that's actually pathognomonic for sarcoidosis. And uveitis may be present, but usually these things happen later. So usually you're only going to see the pulmonary complaints and the constitutional symptoms. And so because these pulmonary complaints and constitutional symptoms are relatively nonspecific, it uh, really doesn't give us a great idea. So usually we're not going to detect sarcoidosis until we see the chest x-ray. Thankfully, what we see on chest x-ray is very, uh, I wouldn't say very specific, but pretty specific for sarcoidosis with that bilateral lymphadenopathy. Physical exam isn't really going to show us anything. Sarcoidosis, unlike some of the other interstitial lung diseases, doesn't present with crackles. So the physical exam is going to be pretty unremarkable. Of course, that's uh, not the case if the patient has the lupus perneo or uveitis. Uh, but like I said, that usually is not the presenting symptom. Usually it's going to be uh, the pulmonary complaints and the constitutional symptoms. So the best initial test is going to be, get, is going to, be to get a chest x-ray, and that's just because it's easy to do. The patient has pulmonary complaints, so we're going to need a chest x-ray anyway. And... Uh, that's going to show bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy with or without infiltrates. Usually early on in sarcoidosis, it's just going to be the bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. The most accurate diagnostic test is going to be a biopsy. The biopsy is going to show the granulomas. Usually we can do the biopsy transbronchial, but we can take multiple different approaches. A biopsy is also going to be necessary to differentiate sarcoidosis from lymphoma. So even if the patient has lupus perneo and we are 99% certain that this patient has sarcoidosis because they have this pathognomonic sign, you're still going to need to get a biopsy because, uh, because you have to uh, definitively differentiate uh, sarcoidosis from granuloma, or from, uh, from lymphoma, sorry. Okay, uh, so like I said, best initial test is a chest x-ray. 
Uh, most accurate test is a biopsy. So other tests that may be performed but aren't necessarily uh, included in uh, your initial testing or your definitive testing could include pulmonary function tests, which we generally are going to get, but it's not the most, it's not the best initial test and it's not the most accurate diagnostic test, so you're probably not going to see it come up as an answer on the USMLE. So pulmonary function tests, of course, are going to show a restrictive pattern, so decreased lung volumes. Sarcoidosis uh, will also show a reduced diffusion on your DLCO, and that's just because this is a disease that affects the, uh, the tissue of the lungs. Bronchial alveolar lavage is not typically done anymore, but if it is, uh, if it is given to you on the USMLE that the test was done, it will be an elevated CD4 to CD8 ratio. Routine labs generally show an elevated ESR, just as a that's just a marker of inflammation and leukopenia, but those are not specific labs at all. The differential diagnosis is primarily three things. It's histiocytosis X, which when you get, it, it has some similar symptoms in as much as you have uh, your constitutional symptoms and some pulmonary symptoms, but on your chest x-ray, it's going to be relatively normal. You're not going to see hyalur lymphadenopathy, that's for sure. Lymphoma is going to be discerned on biopsy, so that's why we're getting the biopsy. And then tuberculosis uh, is the differential there is going to be if the patient has had exposure to TB. Uh, generally, patients with tuberculosis will, uh, will, they will never have skin or ocular symptoms. And usually, we just throw in to differentiate TB by just performing a simple PPD Manto test. So, uh, if the USMLE really wants you to differentiate sarcoidosis, they'll either tell you that the patient is an immigrant, uh, which tells you that they've possibly had exposure, or, uh, or they'll tell you that the patient has skin symptoms and ocular symptoms, which points you towards sarcoidosis. So those are the major three differentials. So here are the normal chest x-ray, just for a brief review. We're going to be looking at some chest x-rays here uh, of bi bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. So your hyalur lymph nodes are lymph nodes that surround the, uh, the trachea and uh, the heart. So where we see these lymph nodes are uh, sort of coming off of where the, uh, where the trachea splits, where uh, you're, uh, you split into your main stem bronchi. So right above the heart here. So you can see the difference. Here we don't have those. Here we've got these, uh, this lymphadenopathy. Here's another one in the same place. And here's another one. You don't see as much of the lymphadenopathy here, but you see a lot more infiltration. Whereas in this and in this, you don't see much infiltrates at all. So the degree of infiltrates generally correspond to the pulmonary symptoms, but in all patients with, uh, with, uh, with um, sarcoidosis, you're going to have the bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. This is a very, very characteristic finding of sarcoidosis. Okay, so this is lupus pernio, and lupus pernio is your pathognomonic sign for uh, sarcoidosis. Lupus pernio will, uh, like any lupus skin disease, will affect uh, the upper cheeks, uh, can affect around the eyes, below the nose. Uh, it's, that, uh, it's the same as what you would get with your typical lupus. Now, lupus pernio specifically is this indurated, tough, purplish lesion. And it's very disfiguring. It tends to start around uh, the bottom of the nose and then spread outward uh, laterally to the cheeks and then up the nose. Uh, it usually doesn't affect, uh, uh, well, usually it will affect the, the tip of the nose and underneath the nose, but it generally doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't go into the nose. So generally these patients are able to breathe through their nose, uh, but it affects the skin around the nose and on the tip of the nose. So this is a, a obviously a much uh, less severe case. Here's some more severe cases. Usually starts around the nose and then goes outward. Erythema nodosum is another, uh, another skin finding. This is not specific to uh, sarcoidosis, 
You can see this in Crohn's disease. Uh, you can see this in other autoimmune diseases. You can see this in Lofgren syndrome, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, so uh, this is just these sort of welts. They tend to appear on the shins. Here's another one. Okay, so the treatment for sarcoidosis is oral prednisone. Usually we start the prednisone when the patient is having significant pulmonary symptoms uh, and we wean them off of it after a six month, uh, after a six month therapy. So uh, they're not going to be on prednisone their whole lives. If they have severe symptoms, oftentimes there are steroid sparing agents that we can use, but you're not responsible for knowing those for the USMLE. So just remember that the mainstay of therapy for sarcoidosis is oral prednisone. Once you've diagnosed the patient with sarcoidosis, you need to make a referral to ophthalmology, and that's for a slit lamp uh, exam. So you want to have an ophthalmologist giving them a good workup for uh, any kind of uveitis that may be there. You, you won't be able to uh, make a complete uh, rule out of uveitis, so they need to have ophthalmology look at them. So you always need to make that referral on any patient uh, that you've diagnosed with sarcoidosis. The patients need to get an annual EKG. Primarily, you're looking for conduction abnormalities, namely left and right bundle block. And uh, they're also going to need to get annual pulmonary function tests uh, and possibly annual chest x-rays to uh, see if there's any uh, decline in their lung function. They should also be getting follow-up routine labs. And Primarily there, you're looking at liver enzymes, uh, looking at the kidney, and so forth. And then NSAIDs can be used uh, ad lib for pain. The complications of sarcoidosis are progressive pulmonary fibrosis, congestive heart disease because of the fibrosis, you're getting core pulmonale, and sudden cardiac death because of sarcoids possibly forming on the heart, causing the conduction abnormalities. Can, it can send them into VFib. But that's why we're getting the annual EKGs and the annual pulmonary function tests to, uh, to treat those complications uh, uh, before they become significant. So Lofgren syndrome is something that always should be considered with sarcoidosis. And it clinically resembles sarcoidosis in presentation in as much as you're getting your uh, constitutional symptoms, fever, malaise, uh, polyarthralgias, you're getting your respiratory symptoms like dyspnea, shortness of breath, and you're getting skin symptoms like erythema nodosum. And when you get a chest x-ray, which you would do because you're thinking probably that this patient has sarcoidosis, uh, you're going to see bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. What's the difference between Lofgren syndrome and sarcoidosis? In Lofgren syndrome, it tends to present in Scandinavian patients, whereas sarcoidosis tends to present in black patients. So if you're practicing in the upper Midwest, possibly Lofgren syndrome instead of sarcoidosis. The major difference with Lofgren syndrome is that they do not develop lupus perneo. So you may not know if the patient has sarcoidosis versus Lofgren syndrome if the patient doesn't have lupus perneo. Certainly a patient with sarcoidosis doesn't necessarily have to have lupus perneo at that moment, but uh, with Lofgren syndrome, they will never develop lupus perneo. If they have lupus perneo with these symptoms, it is definitely sarcoidosis. And Lofgren syndrome, most importantly, has a better prognosis this disease tends to resolve spontaneously over one to two years, whereas sarcoidosis does not do that. So just a review of sarcoidosis. So uh, what some of the things that you see uh, most frequently are these enlarged hilar lymph nodes, scarring, granulomas of the lung, lupus perneo. Uh, you can get uh, liver enlargement, splenic enlargement. Uh, you can get renal symptoms. You can get heart complications, namely conduction abnormalities. You can get blockage of the salivary glands. You can get block, uh, blockage uh, of uh, glands pertaining to the eye. Uh, burning, itching, tearing, pain, that tends to uh, correspond with uveitis. You can get brain complications, that's very unusual. Uh, and then uh, peripheral nervous uh, symptoms. And then erythema nodosum and, uh, and the lupus perineal. So, uh, that's pretty much it. If you know all this stuff, you know everything you need to know for sarcoidosis.